In this video, we'll look at how to index a 1D array to access and modify its elements. We'll start by making a 1D array called foo with five elements. So here I'll say foo equals mp.array, open parens, list, and then our favorite array, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And let's go ahead and print foo after we build it. All right, now we can access the ith element just like a Python list using square bracket notation where the first element starts at index zero and the second element starts at index one and, and so on. So for example, if I do foo square bracket zero, I get the first element and foo square brackets one gives me the second element and so on. Now, if we wanna modify an element, say we wanna change the second element to 99, then we can just type foo square brackets one and then equals what we wanna change it to like 99. Now, if I print foo, you can see that it updated. Now, since we know foo has five elements, if we wanted to access the last element, we could do foo square brackets four, and we get back 50. Now, if we wanna make that more dynamic, we could replace the index four with len foo minus one, but we can do even better than that using negative indexing. So just like Python lists, the, the index negative one returns the last element in the array. The index negative two returns the second to last element. Negative three returns the third to last element and so on. And if we try to access an element outside the bounds of the array, like foo square brackets 999, we'll get an out of bounds error. If we want to access multiple elements at once, we can do that too using a list or numpy array of indices. So for example, I can say foo square brackets and then pass in a list like 0, 1, 4. In this case, I get back the first, second, and fifth elements in the array. Or we could do foo square brackets and then pass in a list like 0, 1, 0, 1 with repeated values just to show you that the indices don't need to be unique. We could even pass in something like np uh, zeros and build a numpy array of indices. So I'll say np.zeros shape equals three. Well, maybe not. So the problem here is that the zeros function returns an array of floating point zeros by default and indices need to be integers or Boolean, we'll talk about that later. So if I print mp.zeros shape equals three, you can see these decimals here, and that indicates that these are floating point values. And if we go back to the zeros uh, function documentation, you can see by default, there's this argument called dtype that's set to float. So we need to make these guys integers, and there's a few different ways to do that, but I'll use uh, dtype equals open quotes uh, int 64, make these guys 64-bit integers. And now I can just pass that into uh, the square brackets here. And now it works. And so it basically returns the uh, first element three times. All right, now another thing we can do is use slicing, just like Python lists. The signature here is basically foo, square brackets, start index, colon end index, colon step size. And there's a lot of shorthands to this, so let's look at some examples. So if we do foo colon, um, excuse, excuse me, foo square brackets colon two, we get back every element from the beginning of the array to index two exclusive. If we do foo square brackets two colon, we get back every element from index two to the end of the array. And if we do foo square brackets colon colon two, we get back every other element from the beginning of the array to the end. In other words, we get back the elements at indices zero, two, four, and so on. Another thing we can do is modify multiple elements at once. So for example, here we'll set uh, foo square brackets indices 0, 1, 4, equal to the values uh, 100, 200, and 400. 
and then let's go ahead and print foo after we do that. So you can see foo updated as we told it to. Um, but in this case, our list of values, it needs to be the same size as our list of indices, unless we assign to a single value, in which case it gets applied to every index. So for example, if we say something like foo square brackets and then pass in a list of indices like 0, 1, 4, just like before, but this time we set it equal to the list 1, 2. Well, these are not the same size. So in this case, NumPy is going to throw an error, specifically a shape mismatch error. Um, but what would work is if we do something like this. And in this case, even though they're not the same size, um, the value 1 gets assigned to each of these indices.